This is Mrs. Kremschreiter, and I am so pleased that you have chosen French 1 and French as your foreign language while at Chippewa Hills High School. This video is to go over your textbook, pages 1 through 11. So again, the intention here is that you're going to have your own textbook out and in front of the video as you watch the video on your Chromebook. Um, the images in the video are just there to help make sure you know where you're supposed to be. So we're going to start on page one in your textbook, and it says, Bienvenue and welcome. Cher ami, welcome to Discovering French Nouveau, and congratulations on your choice of French as a foreign language. Perhaps someone in your family speaks French. Maybe you know people who are of French-speaking origin, from France or Canada or Louisiana or Haiti or Western Africa and you want to better appreciate their heritage. Or perhaps you are hoping to travel to Quebec or Martinique or Paris and want to be able to get around easily on your own. Perhaps simply you were influenced by the fact that French is a beautiful language. Or maybe you have studied ballet and already know quite a few French expressions. Or you like to bicycle and enjoy watching the Tour de France. Or you love the internet and want to explore the many exciting French sites. Or perhaps your friends have told you that French class is fun and opens doors to a whole new world. Whatever the reason or reasons, welcome and bienvenue. By learning French, you will get to know and communicate with people who use French in their daily lives. These millions of French speakers or francophones come from a wide variety of ethnic and cultural backgrounds. As you will see, they live not only in France and other parts of Europe, but also in Africa in North and South America, in Asia, in fact, on all continents. By studying French, you will also develop a better understanding of your own language and how it works, and by exploring cultural similarities and differences, you will grow to appreciate your own culture and value the culture of others. On the pages of this book and in the accompanying video, you will meet many young people who speak French. Listen carefully to what they say and how they express themselves. They will help you understand not only their language, but also the way they live. Bon chance, Jean-Paul Vallette and Rebecca M. Vallette. So, pourquoi parler français? Why speak French? Oftentimes, students will tell me that they've had some people in their lives that have asked them the same question. So, when people ask you why you've taken French, and usually it's followed with, why are you taking French instead of Spanish? Okay, here are some good reasons why you would be taking French. Okay, so um, reason number one, okay. French is an international language. French is the set first or second language in about 50 countries or regions in Europe, Africa, North and South America, Asia, and Oceania. It is spoken by over 100 million people around the world. And in fact, if you look at where in the world um, we still have um, more development to go and discovery of natural resources, that's on the continent of Africa. And a lot of the continent of Africa okay, speaks French. Number two, French is an important diplomatic language. French is one of the five official languages of the United Nations and one of the two main languages of the European Union. So again, French is a language that is used by people around the world. Number three, French is the second language on the internet. With French, you have immediate access to internet sites in France and Quebec, as well as sites in Belgium, Switzerland, and French-speaking countries of Africa. Now, I'm not sure if this is still true. If you take a moment to look at the copyright of your textbook, um, I think it is 2004. So your book is 16 years old to start with. So keep it that in mind when you see pictures that you think um, the clothes look a little goofy or you hear statistics that might not be the case any longer. Number four. France is a technologically advanced country. Historically, French inventors have contributed significantly to the advancement of science. Today, France is a leader in areas such as aerospace technology, high-speed transportation, automotive design, and medical research, which is very much still the case. Number five, 
France is a leader in the world of art and literature. Over the past 400 years, Paris has been an important cultural center, attracting artists and writers from around the world. France has won more Nobel Prizes in literature than any other country. All right, number six. France is a prime tourist destination. Sorry, my dog is barking. All right. France is a prime tourist destination. If you like to travel, it will not surprise you to learn that millions of tourists visit France every year, and speaking French makes their vacations much more meaningful and more enjoyable. One of the things um, that you might hear about French people is the fact that sometimes people in Paris, Parisians, are considered rude. When you think about that, I want you to kind of take that with a grain of salt, okay? You kind of have to put yourself in their situation. So France, and Paris in particular, gets tourists from all over the world. And many of these tourists don't learn any French. So they come to Paris, and they're speaking to the shopkeepers, and they're speaking in their native language. So to put it in context, let's imagine that Remus somehow suddenly became the tourist capital of the world. So, and let's imagine, right, Remus Tavern. Let's imagine the people that work in Remus Tavern, if there were French people and people from Japan and people from all over the world coming into Remus Tavern, and when they were talking to the workers in Remus Tavern, they spoke in their native language, and they expected the people in Remus Tavern to speak that language. Do you think the people in Remus Tavern were getting a little upset and frustrated? Probably that's how the people in Paris feel. Many people visit Paris and they don't know any French. So as Americans, we might go there and we go into shops and we want to buy things, we want to order things, and we expect them to speak English. Again, you can kind of see how that might get a little frustrating, okay? Number seven, for many people, French evokes style and elegance. When people think of high fashion, beauty products, perfumes, or gourmet cuisine, they think of France, and rightly so. Right? Fran France is well known as being kind of um, the fashion capital of the world. Number eight. Knowing French will enrich your English. In 1066, William the Conqueror, a French nobleman, invaded England and became king, bringing with him his court and his language, French. Today, over one-third of all English words are derived from French. As you study French, you will increase your English vocabulary. Number nine. Knowing French will help you with your university studies. University admissions officers look for candidates who, are, who have foreign language skills. In addition, research by the college board shows that the longer students study a foreign language, the higher their math and verbal SAT scores. Remember, this is the test that all students in the state of Michigan are going to take at the end of, actually in April of your junior year. So again, what they're saying here is by studying French, you're more likely to do well on that test, which is the entrance test for colleges and universities. Number 10, knowing French will be useful for your career. Many jobs require the knowledge of another language. France and Canada are major trading partners of the United States. In addition, about 1,000 French companies have subsidiaries in this country, meaning they have a branch in our country. So these are some reasons to study French. The pictures that you see here on this page, we have le TGV train à grande vitesse. Okay. The top photo of the TGV train was taken at the Gare de Lyon in Paris. The other picture here, okay, the L'Université Paris-Sorbonne. Okay. Um, the bottom photo is of the Église de la Sorbonne. The Sorbonne was founded in 1257 by Robert de Sorbonne, but today the Église is the oldest part of the university. It was built by Le Marcier between 1635 and 1642. The Sorbonne is located in the Quartier Latin, which is full of cafes, bookstores, and shops that cater to the student population. These pictures here, we have Un Cyber Café à Paris, 
we have L'Opera Nationale de Paris. L'Opera Nationale de Paris, this building was designed by Charles Garnier and was completed in 1874. It is also known as L'Opera de Paris, Le Palais Garnier, and simply L'Opera. In addition to opera, spectators can see concerts, ballets, and modern dance performances. And then we have Le Musée du Louvre. Probably the most well-known pieces of the Louvre's collection are the Mona Lisa, La Jacon, by Leonardo da Vinci, and the Venus de Milo. But the museum also houses ancient and medieval artifacts and paintings and sculptures from around the world and of many eras. The pyramid is the main entrance to the Louvre. At night, the pyramid and the facades of the Louvre are illuminated, or they are lit up. All right. Bonjour la France. Connaissez-vous la France? So, do you know France? In area, France is the second largest country in Western Europe. It is smaller than Texas, but bigger than California. Geographically, France is a very diversified country. With the highest mountains in Europe, Les Alpes and Les Pyrenees, and an extensive coastline along the Atlantic, L'Océana Atlantique, and the Mediterranean, La Méditerranée. To me, this is probably kind of the part of Paris that I find, or part of France that I find most appealing. So France is a pretty small um, country. I studied um, in Paris when I was in college, um, spent three months there. And for me, if you kind of take a look at that picture that's in your book, for me to go from Paris to, I went to Switzerland, just inside the country, um, country of Switzerland, La Suisse, that trip on the TGV, that high-speed train, only took about an hour and a half, okay? Um, I also went from Paris to um, Nice, and you can see where Nice is. That's on the Mediterranean, okay? That took about four hours by high-speed train, and high-speed train tickets are inexpensive. So what I find fascinating about France as a country is this idea that on a weekend in the winter, if I live in Paris, within an hour and a half to two hours, I could be in the Alps skiing. For us here in Michigan to go skiing on real mountains, like out the Rocky Mountains, that's a 16-hour car drive one way. Or a flight. Not something we're probably going to do for the weekend. If I want to go and have some warm weather, I can go to the Mediterranean. Along the Mediterranean, it's palm trees. It's like Florida or California. It's a mild climate year round. Again, from Paris, that's a four, four and a half hour train ride. You can easily go for the weekend. They have a coast on the Atlantic Ocean, which is going to be like an ocean um, Atlantic coast in the United States. So in this tiny little country where these things are only a couple hours away, you have all these different things you can do. France consists of many different regions that have maintained their traditions, their culture, and in some cases their own language. Some of the traditional provinces are Normandy and Brittany, La Normandie and La Bretagne. In the west, Alsace, L'Alsace in the east, Touraine, La Touraine in the center, and Provence, La Provence in the south. So those are different areas of France. All right, some pictures that are here. Okay. Um, Paris, Montmartre, Paris, the capital of France, is also its economic, intellectual, and artistic center. For many people, Paris is the most beautiful city in the world. Snowboarding in the Alps during winter vacation. Many French young people enjoy snowboarding or skiing. The most popular destinations are the Alps and the Pyrenees. The Chateau de Chauvinson. Um, the long history of France is evident in its many castles and monuments. This chateau, built in the 16th century, attracts nearly 1 million visitors a year. I was fortunate enough to get to visit this castle. Okay. Um, the Chateau de Chomiso was completed in 1521. It is picturesque because part of the castle sits on a bridge over the river Cher. This addition was made by Catherine de Medici in the late 1500s. So you can't really tell in this picture, 
but this part of this castle is actually on a bridge that crosses the river. And the rumor is that during World War II, um, one side of this river was occupied by Nazi Germany and the other side was free. And so it is rumored that this was a, through this castle, was a way that people escaped. Um, they snuck out of Nazi Germany occupied areas by going through the castle. Um, and then we have the home in Provence. The French love flowers and take pride in making their homes beautiful. This house is built in the traditional style Provence, a region in southern France. Bonjour les Français, here are some facts about France and the French people. La France, capitale Paris, population 60 millions d'habitants, drapeau bleu, blanc, rouge. Le drapeau français. So the idea here with your textbook is they kind of think that you should be able to figure out what some of these things mean, right? La France is just the name for France in French. Capitale, capital, and the capital is Paris. Population, population. Now, drapeaux may be a little bit harder, but look, they give you a picture right here. What's a drapeau? A flag. And what color is bleu? Blue. Blanc? White. Rouge? Red. Okay. Um, we have devise, liberté, égalité, fraternité, and monnaie, l'euro. And la monnaie française, l'euro, right? So they, again, kind of want you to figure out what monnaie is, right? It's money, and then it's the euro. This device, this is like the motto, okay? Liberté, égalité, fraternité, right? In English, that would be liberty, equality, fraternity. So by liberty, what they're talking about is freedom, right? So they're saying... Freedom, equality, so all people being equal, and then fraternity, that's like another word for brotherhood. So that idea that the French kind of come together as a group, that's kind of their motto. Um, down here we have more about the French, les Français, origine de la population monte ethnique, européenne, majorité, nord africaine, africaine, and asiatique. Right, so this is talking about the origins of the population, and it says it's multi-ethnic. The European are the majority, North African, African, and Asian. Principal religion pratiquée, catholique, majorité, muslim, juive, and protestant. Okay, so again here now they're talking about the religions practiced in France. Catholic is the majority. I'm not 100% sure that that's true any longer. Muslim, Jewish, Protestant. Okay. Um, I think that it's possible that Muslim might be, have become the largest um, religion practice. So France has a very large Muslim population. Um, and part of that has to do with, we'll see here in a couple, a couple minutes, with where in the world um, people outside of France speak French. Next we have, these are some young French people you'll meet in the video. So there's a video that goes along with our textbook. So we have Jean-Paul Age 14 ans, Céline Age 15 ans, Léa Age 15 ans, François Age 14 ans, Isabelle Age 14 ans, Stephanie Age 14 ans, Philippe Age 15 ans, Jean Age 14 ans, Antoine Age 14 ans. Again, they purposely chose people that were about your age so that you might relate. Again, when it comes to clothes, keep in mind, okay, your textbook is old, okay? It has a copyright date of 2004, okay? So 2004 is when they printed it, but they would have had to put it together for anywhere from three to five years before that, right? So we're talking about pictures that would have been taken maybe around 2000, right? That's 20 years ago. <laughs> so keep that in mind when you're looking at the pictures and you're looking at the way they're dressed and when also your book gives you facts on things, okay? They may not be true any longer. They were true 20 years ago when your textbook was published. 
Bonjour le mot francophone. So we're going to look at where in the world they speak French. So we have Canada. About one third of the population speaks French. These French speakers live mainly in the province of Quebec, Le Québec. They are descendants of French settlers who came to Canada in the 17th and 18th centuries. So again, this is one of those things where knowing a little bit about Michigan history is nice, right? Um, if you have learned some Michigan history at some point in the past, hopefully you learned that um, Michigan was mostly explored by actually the French because people came in through the St. Lawrence Seaway and into the Great Lakes. And this area, okay, that was French controlled. So many people who have lived in Michigan for a long period of time, if you can trace your lineage back several hundred years, likelihood is you have some French in you because it was mostly French explorers that initially explored the Great Lakes. In fact, Detroit, Detroit comes from a French word, okay? Haiti. Haiti is the first black republic. Its people speak Creole and French. And Martinique and Guadeloupe. These two Caribbean islands, La Martinique and La Guadeloupe, are part of France. Their inhabitants, primarily of African ancestry, are French citizens. Europe. French is spoken in parts of Belgium, La Belgique, Switzerland, La Suisse, and Luxembourg, Le Luxembourg. North Africa. French is understood and spoken by many people of Algeria, L'Algerie, Morocco, Le Maroc, and Tunisia, La Tunisie. More than 2 million people from these countries have emigrated to France and have become French citizens. So this has to do with why a large amount of the French population is of Muslim religion because when things are bad or unpleasant in North Africa, um, when it's difficult to get by, because many of the people already speak French, they choose to leave and go to France, and they bring their religion with them. Western and Central Africa. About 20 African countries have adopted French as their official language. These countries include Senegal, the Senegal, the Ivory Coast, la Côte d'Ivoire, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, la République démocratique du Congo. French is also spoken on the large island of Madagascar. Again, this has to do with the fact that as a country, um, remember, we speak English because we were originally a colony of Great Britain. And Great Britain speaks English, so we speak English. While France also had colonies, but most of their colonies were in Africa. And so, as a result, a lot of Africa speaks French. Bonjour, je m'appelle. As you begin your study of French, you may want to adopt a French identity. Here is a list of some common French names. If you would like a French name, you just have to let me know. Okay. Nom traditionnel garçon. So these are traditional boys' names. Alain, André, Antoine, Bernard, Christophe, Clément, Edouard, Eric, François, Frédéric, Georges, Guillaume, Henri, Jacques, Jean, Jean-Louis, Jean-Paul, Jérôme, Joseph, Julien, Laurent, Marc, Mathieu, Michel, Nicolas, Olivier, Patrick, Paul, Philippe, Pierre, Robert, Stéphane, Thomas, Vincent. And here are the nom traditionnel filles, so traditional girls' names. Anne, Anne-Marie, Auriel, Beatrice, Caroline, Cécile, Céline, Charlotte, Christine, Claire, Elisabeth, Elodie, Emile, Florence, Françoise, Elan, Isabelle, Jean, Julie, Laure, Lia, Louise, Marie, Marie-Christine, Mathilde, Melanie, Michel, Monique, Nathalie, Nico, Pauline, Sophie, Stephanie, Suzanne, Sylvie, Therese, Véronique, and Virginie. Again, we have some nom d'origine nord africain So some French people of North African or African descent have names that reflect their origin. I'm going to tell you that I don't know that I pronounce all of these correctly. For Garçon, Ali, Ahmad, Abib, Latifa, Mustafa, Youssef. For Fille, which would be girls, Aisha, Fatima, Jamila, Leila, Yasmina and Zania. And then we have Nom um, d'origine africain. 
Garçon, Abdu, Amadou, Kofi, Kwami, Usa, Usam, Fi, Ajwa, Asta, Aya, Latifa, Malika, and Mariama. Again, if you would like to choose a French name, you are more than welcome to do so. You can tell me what it is. Um, do know that I'm going to learn your given name that your parents probably spent quite a bit of time selecting for you. Um, but once I know your given name, I may switch over and start using your French name when I address you. So I hope that has kind of given you a little preview into French and given you some ammunition if you have those people that are asking you, why in the world are you taking French instead of Spanish? Au revoir. A demain.